Good morning guys, welcome to this week's vlog. Reasons why I live on an Arrowboat. I haven't numbered them because you know me, I can just chat away. And we just left a lovely moor in there. And you know I'll go off on a tangent too. <laughs> For me, the first and only reason why I live on an Arrowboat and why maybe you should buy an Arrowboat if that's what you want to do. It's got to be because you love boats. I have fell in love with this boat, absolutely fell in love with it. I've done loads of work on it myself, I've done it, I've got it just right and I absolutely love the feeling of having this home and just taking it all over the country. And when I pull the curtains at night I'm still in the same place, it's wonderful and I can travel all over the country, I'm in the middle of nowhere. I've just seen one person funny enough, it, some days I go you know, nearly a whole day and not see a single soul. And it's just lovely to be out in this in the nature in the countryside and it doesn't matter what the weather's like it's just wonderful there's one word that sums it all because i love being by water I, I, it's old earth water and fire things so i've got a log burner I'm, i've got the water and i'm always on the earth i'm never on concrete rarely on concrete unless i go into a town and i don't know whether that just gives you that feel good factor of just been in the country, whether it's seen all the green all the time, because everywhere I look is green all the time, even in winter, I just see green. And, and even in the dark nights, because I'm out every day, and I'm on the boat and I'm about, I don't get that sad feeling, even in winter. You know, we've got all the downsides of winter, and that's next week's one. But just something, the one word sums it up for me is magical. There's just something magical about owning a great big boat, what you call home, and maintaining it, looking after it, touching it up, nursing it into every lock nice and gentle, cruising along at this slow pace. I mean, if I see a boat coming, you don't have to panic, it's miles away. It'll take me five minutes, get there when I see him. So it's just, your whole pace of life slows down. If somebody like me who's Know, work crazy for 30 years to suddenly retire and go at this lovely slow pace it's just amazing it's absolutely amazing Another reason for me why living on a narrowboat is just absolutely fabulous. There's actually a World War II bunker there, uh, and the pillar boxes. They're dotted all the way along the Kennet and Avon Canal. Sorry, the second reason for me living on a narrowboat is, you know, has got to be the wildlife. What I have seen in one year since I came down the, I came from Macclesfield. I travelled down to the Trenton Mersey, across to Chester. I had three weeks in Chester, I then came down to Shropshire, Stourport, down the River Severn to Tewkesbury, 
up the River Avon through Evesham, Pershore, into Stratford on Avon. Uh, caught Noel Coward's Blight Spirit in Stratford on Avon, that was fabulous. And then I came onto the river down the Oxford Canal through Warwickshire into Warwick Castle, had a day there. I then came down the Oxford Canal into onto the River Thames and then down out to Letchlade, back down into Oxford for a couple of weeks and then dropped down into Reading and then onto this Kennet and Avon for winter. So I've been on here since November. But what I've seen in that year is absolutely incredible. I've seen otters, I've seen stoats, I've seen weasels, I've seen voles, I've seen a snake, a snake, a big thing going across in the water, fabulous. But as a bird watch, I've seen just so many birds. I sat one night having a barbecue in Oxford and you get the best sunsets in Oxford, that's a reason to live on a narrow boat. You get the best sunsets and you see them every day. But I sat there and a barn owl came over the boat and I was sitting on the towpath, didn't see me. It was hovering just 100 yards in front of me over a wheat field. Just dropped down, caught a mouse, flew straight back over the top of me and landed in a tree sitting behind me. It's just, honestly, some of the birds I've seen, sparrowworts, kestrels, owls, the owls at night, the noise they make at night, you just lying in bed and all you can hear is owls chatting to each other. I see even walking down the towpath one night, I saw about four or five owls in a tree all at the same time. Obviously they were young, but they were all together. It was just the things you see in wildlife. And, and when you get up in the morning, where we've just been moored back there, when you open them side hatches, what you can see just next to your boat is incredible, incredible. Kingfishers, I've seen thousands. Absolutely wonderful. So for me, the reason to live on a narrowboat, for me personally, is just the wildlife alone. Yeah, it's lovely when you just look out the uh, side hatches. It's not very often that you uh, can get the camera the opposite side of the canal, actually. Just got my long lens uh, photography camera there. But I filmed all these little bits coming up now, uh, just, just over the few days I was moored there. Every morning there was different birds and you can see here's a lovely little chiff chaff. Uh, there's a little jenny wren there just dropped on the branch behind. And of course the mallard, he sat there every night, that was his little spot that, so he was my friend for a, for a week. Beautiful little chaff inches, there was a lot of them about, there was, uh, they do tend to huddle together over winter. Uh, some lovely grey wagtails here, often mistaken from as yellow wagtails, these are actually grey wagtails. Uh, I think, I didn't find the nest, but I think they were nesting on the bridge behind me. Uh, there was a big gap in the bridge and I saw them swooping in and out of there a couple of times. So whether they were catching flies off the wall, sometimes when the flies come out they sit on a hot surface to dry the wings before taking off. But, uh, I think they might have been nesting there. Another little chiff chaff, uh, uh, chaffing, sorry, beautiful little bird. Beautiful colours, that's the male. Uh, one of the most difficult little ones to follow, these little long tail tits, they came, uh, they again huddled together as little groups. Uh, quite difficult to film actually, they like lightning. Beautiful, beautiful little bird. And here's my little friend again for the week. Lovely little mallard. You see so many of them on the canal, you take them for granted really, and they're such a beautiful, beautiful bird. And then coming up, I couldn't film them on the day, but this was another spot uh, a couple of days, a week before when I stayed uh, near Hungerford. Uh, these tyrants, uh, these are very demanding Hello. birds. Uh, but they are lovely, they do come to the I'm window on the most days if, you, if you're about, they seem to know that. Us boaters right, carry swan knocking. food. I'm you some. Here you are, look.
problem is you can't fill them up. There you go. Oh, thank you. Are you going to keep knocking all night if I don't give you some more? Last bit, here. There you go. Okay guys, thanks for calling. See you later. Thanks for calling. Ow! Careful. There's another perfect example of why I live on a narrowboat, and that's the community. Two young guys there just coming down behind us, you know, just run up and help me all the way through the lock. And you see that everywhere, 99.9% .9 of the people who live on boats are all the same. Absolutely lovely, wonderful people. It's like going back to the 70s, knocking on the boat for a cup of sugar. <laughs> No, it's wonderful. The community is absolutely lovely. Everybody's like-minded. Everybody helps each other. You know, you feel safe if you board an extra couple of boats and you bob off shopping. Everybody keeps an eye on your boat for you. Everybody wants to look inside each other's boats and things. It's just a wonderful, wonderful community. So for me, another reason to live in a narrowboat is the community, the people. Generally people on the towpaths, I don't know whether you ever notice this, if you get down the canals just walking your dog or whatever you do, when you're on the canals everybody says hello. When you walk down the main street of a town nobody speaks to each other. But on the canal everybody speaks. So I spend my whole day saying hello and people complimenting you or chatting to you or asking you about boat life. Complimenting you on your flowers on the roof anything people almost want to strike a conversation and you don't get that in a town you just don't get that it's strange we've lost that so for me another reason to live on an arabo is the community and i'm very proud to be a part of that community
The next reason to live in a narrowboat is the peace and the quiet and the tranquility and another very important part, the darkness. The darkness I can't explain because when you're out here there's no light pollution, there's no street lights. So when you go to bed at night and you switch the light off, that's the last thing you see is your finger touching the switch because it's just black. Everywhere's black. Some people have said to me in odd time, don't you get worried about being in the middle of nowhere on your own? I think the guy walking down the towpath needs to be worried because he can't see. So unless you've got a big torch, you just can't see anything on the towpath at night. Look out the boat window and it's pitch within five feet in either direction, it's completely pitch black. And that's really wonderful and it's very peaceful. And I don't think I've slept as well since I've been on an narrowboat. I go to sleep now and I just sleep like a baby. Straight, I'm out like a light, it's fantastic. But I don't know whether that's also being the opening air, open air. When I worked in an office, I sat under a fluorescent tube all day, similar to a battery end. And I don't know whether it makes a difference just being out in the fresh air every day. Even if I'm not sailing, I mean today I'm sailing, but some days or cruising. Somebody said you shouldn't say sailing, cruising. I call it sailing, I love being a sailor. Captain of my ship. <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful, the peace and the quiet. In fact, the only, the only noise in, is now is me. It's just, just beautiful. And the birds, they're always tweeting. Just joining the River Kennet in a minute. It's really quick, but I've got to turn around, go back and get some water now and then I'm not sure when it's going to be open as we can carry on. But yeah, the peace, the tranquility, just the quietness, the darkness is amazing. And that's the reason why I live on a narrowboat. Just to be out here. It's beautiful now. It's not a soul about. Got the river just running at the side kite went over a minute ago. I try not let them distract me, I get distracted so easily just being out in the country and I keep seeing birds I've never seen. I saw some gold crests the other day, little gold crests, little tiny things just bobbing about on branch to branch. Couldn't even get a clear shot with the camera. So this is the lot guys. It's lovely. It's just in the middle of nowhere just Beautiful like forest lock. There's Angel, look, she's just that's where we've just moored up. Isn't this just delightful? Now I'll show you what happens when we come out of this lock. And this has been the problem over winter. The river gets too flooded. So you come out of this lock and you suddenly get hit by a massive wave from your port side. because here's the bridge and you can see the river coming in. So there's the river Kennet. And that joins the canal. So now once we've come through this lock, we won't be on the canal, we'll be on the river. And we've got a U-turn and come back upstream and back in. So when I leave this lock in a second, I'm gonna leave the gate open because there's young guys coming down behind me but they'll be okay. They'll hang on while I spin round, come back in, because they've got to fill the lock in.
Okay guys, you can see it's warmed up a bit, got the old t-shirt on. Uh, the last reason I live on a narrowboat, of course, is because it's really enjoyable. Cruising is really enjoyable, it's great fun. So, you know, get yourself out there, get a holiday boot, go and have a trip on a boat and see if you like it because it's absolutely fantastic, it's just great. Just cruising, going up and down through the locks, it's just great, great fun. And that's the last reason I live on a narrowboat. So catch me next week, guys, where we see the reasons not to, and we have a disaster coming up next week. Don't miss it. Thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing, and I'll see you in a bit.